I'm having a conversation with men. We're at the Highland Cigar Company. They were kind enough to give us this place to discuss men and what they want, why don't they talk to us, and why don't they listen to us. So with that said, the Highland Cigar Bar is located at 245 Highland, North Highland Avenue in Atlanta. I want to thank uh, Brian and Robert for allowing us to be here. We will get some answers to um, questions that we've had that we can't seem to get straight answers for. And it was like pulling teeth to get a lot of these men here, but I appreciate all of you for joining us. So, let's start with you. Who are you and uh, what you want, what you do, why don't you talk, why don't you listen, and uh, are you married, single, or what? My name is Harold Hollingstead. I'm a network technician, and I'm contracting for myself eventually. Uh, what I want is happiness, like anybody does. Wait, anybody wait a minute. You right? didn't tell me. Are you married, single? I'm single. Are single. you involved with but somebody? I was, I was married, but I'm single now. So you're divorced. Okay. Well, yeah. You call it divorce status then. That's fine. All right. But I'm, I'm not going to say I'm looking, but if it happens, um, then I'll be fine with that then. So I think that... I don't think you need to just look for it. I think it, when it happens, it'll be all right then. So, and I think eventually when it does, when I find the right one, then I'll be happy. So what's your sign? Somebody. No, I'm playing. I'm Leo. Okay. <laughs> Leo. I'm playing. Lion, row. Okay. So that's pretty much it for me. I mean, I think when it happens, it'll be fine. You know, and okay. I'll be happy. But somebody has to work with me, not against me, but you have to have, find somebody who wants the same things, though. You gotta be on the same page. You just can't say I like you and you like me, and just start going into it. It takes time. It doesn't just happen overnight. How's the woman supposed to know what you want? Well, she'll know that when. Well, she has to have the same kind of vibration I got to want to move forward with that. I think when we we get that, then we can talk about those things. But you gotta be open first. You gotta be honest, and I have to be honest too. But you have to have that. You have to have that that start that basis so you can move towards that. Are you a communicator? Do you very communicate so. with your very mate? Very much so, very okay. much so. And do very you listen? So. I listen also. That was okay. a time that I did listen, but you know, as you grow into your experience, you, do, you end up listening more. But it, it takes life experience to find that out though. Who are you? What Who you am want? I? Do Who you am talk? I? Do you yes, listen? Yes, yes. I talk, I listen. My name is Carl Callender. Um, from Brooklyn, New York. Reside here in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, pretty much uh, my fault, I'm 38. Uh, divorce, um, have a child, I listen and I communicate, but like my man said right here, you know, before I, 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 I didn't listen, uh, I try to communicate, but at the same time I wasn't getting anywhere. But um, give, me, give me one of the questions here, because I got a lot to get okay. off my chest. <laughs> what you want? Oh, what, what, want? what is it that you want, and, and uh, why is it a problem to find it? Why don't you tell your mate? Because I find it hard to believe that you could not have found someone that want the same things that you wanted, that was willing to work with you, willing to talk, would listen to you. You know, I'm, I'm just going by, and okay. I'm not beating up on anybody. Okay. I just want to know. Okay. Well, I'm getting it started for pretty much everybody here. Um, I was married. I've been there, I've done that, and I would love to do it again. You know, when we were together at that time, we were both immature. But at the same time, I worked for family. I wasn't selfish. And a lot of women out here today, unfortunately, think about themselves. Think about themselves. It, it takes two, you know? And, and there's no such thing as 50-50. Sometimes it's gonna be 80-20. Sometimes it's gonna be 90-10. Sometimes it's gonna be 70-30. But you both gotta work at common goals. You both gotta listen to each other and communicate. But the ladies in, in my era, I should say, and, and, and I don't mean to dog out the ladies 30 and under or maybe 35 and under, but they're totally different from my mom or my aunt kind of, I would say, a little lack of respect. They're out here thinking they don't need a man and, and thinking that there's no good brothers out here. But I'm looking at these guys right here on this panel, and pretty much I can tell they, they respectful men. Okay, in defense of, of, of women, and mm -hmm. well, I wouldn't know about 30 and under, 35 and under anymore, but in defense of women, that if you're looking for a woman that's like your mom, mm -hmm. 
a lot of us may, if we had good fathers, are looking for men that were like our dads. Or if we didn't have fathers, we're sometimes we don't know what 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 is a good man, right. or we don't know how to work it out. So that's all I got to say about in defense of women. Okay, who are you? What you want? Why don't you talk? And why don't you listen? Uh, Sammy Davis, um, executive chef, restaurant owner. Um, what do I want? I found what I wanted. Um, I got a good woman, a woman that hit me in stride. Um, I was running a 400 meter race and she hit me right at the 300 meter. Um, I, found, I found exactly what I want. And the reason why is because I'm more spiritual. I'm not overzealous religious, but I'm spiritual. But I know why God placed a womb in a woman because Sammy can only take him so far. And I needed that woman to birth out the rest of my vision and what I wanted in, the, in this business. So when I got with her, I didn't even have to tell her. She, she stopped doing what she was doing, working. And she, was, she had a, she's a doctor. So she was at the height in her career. And she was just like, that's what I'm talking about. She wanted to own a restaurant. And she jumped right into my vision and just birthed it out. She was like, hon, here you go. What do we need to do to make it happen? She believes in it. And right now we have, we've been together for a long time. And we haven't had, I gotta say, we haven't had one argument. You know, we got things that we disagree about in terms of consulting on certain projects for restaurants. But as far as our vision, you know, she really, really helped me. And I'm, and, I'm a, and I'm not a good guy by any stretch of the imagination. I'm very hard. I don't communicate. I can care less about what women think. I don't get into all that. You know, me. <laughs> all right, I'm, you I'm know, because yeah. for a minute there, yeah, I was like, nah, damn, he is just too good nah, to be true. Okay, yeah, let's get to it. I've, 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 run through, I've ran through women like Mexican water. Um, I've been out there, you know, so this is the first time I've been in a true relationship you know so I mean it's kind of working I still have my faults I still do my you know you know strip club strip club thing and stuff like that but I found what I want and the thing that we had that's more important than anything is that we don't have a sexual relationship we both decided to wait until we get married to have sex so that's helped it out a whole lot it doesn't convolute the pool but what but what guys like I had done and what a lot of guys have done is that it's a pool out there and it's like it's certain women in that pool that you can't touch and when you touch women that's in that pool, you, you mess up the whole system. Like a good girl going to college trying to put herself through school, if you was a player like myself, or, or a guy like myself, I don't want to use the word play, but if you was a guy like myself who run through women, it's certain ones that you don't touch. It's, a, it's, almost a, it's almost a code to this thing. You know what I mean? You don't touch her because then down the road, she's not going to trust this guy right here. And he could be a decent guy, even so though I wasn't. It's, it's like it's wife material, and then it's just... Yeah, it's, it's girls, just, it's it's girls out here girl if you want to play, if you wanna the, play the game, material. it's girls okay. that'll play with you. That's the most important thing, but you got to be man enough. You got to man up to be like, yo, I found a girl. Who, who want to play a game with me, she, you know, she'll play with me. She's going to dog you out, too, and you're going to dog out. But you can't mess up the pool. There's good women out there who want to find a good guy like one of these dudes, you know, and but long as the pool isn't messed up. And that's just how I feel about the whole situation. Well, Sammy, you know what? That's really good. And, and I... Uh your girl is gonna really love uh, this DVD. You know. <laughs> oh, she know, and, that, and that's the thing. We have an open. She knows you know, who Sammy is. I she, mean, she's, yeah. she's really gonna love to hear that, and that's great. And I'm proud right. of you. There you, you go. know, and you were honest enough to say that you don't, you care less about what women think. But you know, maybe one day you may wanna uh, just kind of listen. Yeah. You know, because after the honeymoon phase is over, you might wanna hear her. I, I okay. Yeah. You <laughs> may wanna talk. <laughs> you know, because like in the beginning, I'm gonna tell you. We tend to think that you're perfect too, mm -hmm. but then when issues come up, you got to be open enough to be able to listen and talk and let us know when we, we're not doing what you need instead of going out there and trying to find somebody else to replace us. That's the problem because you sit around, men sometimes sit around acting like nothing's wrong, but you know something wrong. You know, and, and, the, and the key to that is that if you a guy and you in the streets, be in the streets. Don't try to settle down before your time. Like now, I'm to the point where I didn't, I didn't did it all. I didn't had the I, didn't, I had the nights in Vegas. I didn't. I didn't did it. So I'm. I'm through with it. You know, it's gonna be nice for one of these young. I don't want to point at your son. <laughs> but you know, one of these guys. You know, I didn't pass the torch. I have on. no children. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just I mean, twenty. But but don't but don't be that guy who you get a decent woman. You say you want a decent woman. You get that decent woman, and you still in the streets like me. I didn't left the streets. I don't. You know, I ain't out there no more. I done, I didn't gave it up. You know. But when I was out there, I was out there. Uh, my name is Bernard. I'm a corporate attorney. I'm married. Uh, I've been married for almost 11 years, and we have four children. And that, that makes my situation a little bit even more challenging 
in terms of, of dealing with the relationships because of the, the demands that are placed on both my wife and I trying to raise four little kids, and they're all pretty close in age. And I think from a standpoint of listening and communicating, one of the big challenges that I face is that my career is so demanding and it takes so much energy to sustain what I do and to be successful in what I do that by the time I get home, I really don't have anything left. I'm exhausted. I'm, I'm mentally exhausted. I'm emotionally exhausted. And I'm really not in a talking, communicating mood. So I think that's one of the, the big challenges for, for me and probably for a lot of men who work really hard to try to support their families. My, my wife uh, is a homemaker. She stays at home with our kids. So I'm the sole income, the breadwinner in the, in the home. So that puts an extra amount of pressure on me and also on what I do. There are very few uh, you know, black corporate attorneys in large law firms in, in anywhere in any city. And you know, that's also that's an added level of stress. But in terms of you know, what I want, one of the first things I think that I think every man wants is respect. I mean, I want to be able to come home and be respected. Um, I want my, I want my, I want to make sure our kids are taken care of. I want to make sure our home is taken care of, and I want to make sure that that everybody's happy. And you know, my wife is a, is a beautiful, wonderful person. And you know, the reason why I, think I chose her when we got married was because she reminded me a lot of my grandmother. And I was raised by my grandmother, and I look at my grandmother next to God is in terms of just the one of the most beautiful spirits that I've ever met. And my wife reminded me of her. Um, also, my wife, uh, she, was, she was very focused and knew what she wanted at an early age. She had a maturity. We got married when she was 21 years old. I was uh, 25. And she knew exactly what she wanted, and she was willing to go along with my program. And we work together, and, and that's something that that uh, that that really worked out well in terms of you know us getting married and joining together and, and having our family together. Uh, my name is Larry Small. Um, I am a, a television producer for churches. I do a lot of TV ministry production. Um, I also do some marketing. Uh, I'm 43 years old. I I'm in my third marriage, so I think I'm oh in a very God. interesting you got a lot situation. Of stuff to talk about. Oh, I got a whole lot to say. Um, I got a whole lot to say, but there's a lot of gentlemen here today. Um, I just recently remarried about three months ago. Okay. You're looking at a man who's always loved to be being married. And I used to always say, why is it a man that's educated, trying to do the right thing, have three wonderful kids uh, from my two previous marriages, why is he divorced? And I'm not a perfect man by any means, uh, but I've had a lot of people say I'm a good man. Uh, I'm educated, I've got a master's degree. Uh, I've never cheated in any marriage that I've been in. Uh, I've never been accused of physical abuse. Again, I'm not a perfect man, but why am I, why am I divorced twice? There are two things that I've experienced and I think tends to be a common denominator in a lot of the challenges with communication with women or among men and, and, and women. One is a lot of our sisters have grown up in households where mama was running things right absolutely so that's what they've been accustomed to so how does a woman who was two years old five years old 12 17 who's been watching mama run things right how does she cohabitate with a brother who's educated who was taught to be a man take care of his family and trying to lead the household it there tends to be a competition factor that occurs which challenges the communication that's been my experience the other thing I've experienced has been real interesting because there are some people, uh, friends I have say 15, 20 years ago when I was in my first marriage who are now going through some challenges and they couldn't figure out what was going on. So I kind of share with them some of the experiences I've had and when I shared it, they said, man, that makes sense, I got it. And here's the common denominator that for these brothers that are good brothers trying to do the right thing, all of a sudden their wives don't want to be married anymore. And that's happened to me and it's happened to them. And the common denominator has been that women at some point are not happy with themselves. And, and, and the common denominator in my situation is that a person who's not happy with themselves are less tolerant of people in their lives or other people. And particularly if, if that's the people they're closest to, which is their spouse. Um, why is that? What, what are they not happy about? Well, sometimes, you know, they were little and they had dreams of 
owning a certain type of home or their career being a certain place or a certain lifestyle and they get 35, 40 and they haven't made it and, and, they, and, they, and it really hits them. And then they start to accuse the brother for whatever reason that is, or it gets competitive. I'll never forget, my, in my second marriage, my wife, who is a celebrity, she used to do HBO and, and uh, BET and all this What's other stuff. No. I won't mention her I'm, name. I'm just playing. I don't expect I won't mention her name. Tell me later. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll never forget, I was pursuing my MBA. And at the same time, I was working for a very prominent company here in town as a director of marketing in the television business. And she actually cried because she felt that my attention would change and, 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 and not give her the attention that she wanted. And it became a competition because I was pursuing my MBA and she hadn't uh, pursued, I guess, some other dreams that she had. I'll never forget the day that I graduated and we had a little party, family got together, and later on that night she said, everything's been about you, everything's been about you for the last two years, now it's my turn. And that told me that there was a little competition. Now I went to school to do better for my family and for her, that was my motivation. So why is my wife saying this to me? It was, so again, I think the common denominator has been women seeing other women run things, so it's hard for them to cohabitate with a brother who's trying to do the right thing in a competition. And, and um, women get to a point in their life where they're not happy with themselves and regardless of how good the brother is, it's like, hey, I'm out of this marriage, I want to do something else. Then they leave and want to come back, which is ridiculous, but it happens. Well, they see the grass is not greener. There you go. You know, um, but I'm not perfect. You know, I, I honestly did not expect uh, to be agreeing with you guys, you know. This ain't good television. <laughs> Who are you, what do you do, and what you want? And why don't you talk and why don't you listen? <laughs> Just All right, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my name's Adrian. I'm an artist. Um, lucky enough to be uh, living off that profession. Um, what do I want? Girl that's wonderful and full of adventure. I mean, simple enough. A little bit like mom, but, you know, modern. And, uh, yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Um, why don't I listen? Yeah. One? Do you listen? I don't I know. I do listen. Do I listen you? a lot. But what, okay. What? Now, excuse me for one, uh, interrupting you, and I know this is terrible for me to interject like this. Absolutely. <laughs> why don't you listen? But it's my show. <laughs> when you listen, because I find that I, I would say. 70% of the men in this room I know. And to me, all of you are wonderful because you all listen to me and you all talk to me. But I find even when, when I cross over, when I, when I date someone that was my friend, it's a totally different thing. Or when the relationship is over and it crosses over into a friendship, then that person becomes the man of my damn dreams. He's listening, he's talking, but he's listening to me talk about somebody else, and he's talking to me about somebody else. So, are you a good friend to your girlfriends that's just your friends, or are you a good man to your woman? Do you listen and talk to her? That's what I want to know. Both. I mean, it's always better when you start off with a friendship, because you kind of understand each other's personalities a lot more without wearing that mask so much that you tend to you know when you start to date somebody but uh... Yeah, it's uh... it's pretty common you know most women you know you get in a little scuffle or something they're thinking emotionally and the man's thinking logically and when you try to kinda handle it because i want to handle something immediately i don't want anything to be in the way of you know losing another special moment with that person you know because of some crap on your mind but uh, I learned that you gotta let them blow off a little steam, not be so emotional, stop being so logical when you're approaching them, and then come back to it and take care of it. What you want in a relationship? Um, what, what you do, you told us that. You said you're a firefighter in Alaska, okay. And um, do you talk? If you don't talk, why don't you? And do you listen? Oh, okay. Okay. 
Uh, I don't talk. You don't talk? Unless I'm drinking. And, uh, <laughs> okay. And, uh, I'll listen unless I start thinking about something, then I'll pretty much cut them off. <laughs> All right. Uh, and what do I want in a relationship? Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I don't like to drive, so maybe someone who drives, so I don't have to worry about driving. Uh, Someone to cook me dinner after I'm working all day. That's pretty nice. <laughs> That's what you want. You want somebody yeah. to cook for you? Yeah. Okay. And, uh... Are you married? Uh, no, I'm widowed. Oh, I'm sorry. So... See, I don't even have a joke for that, but... What? I, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Okay. Just, you have sorry. children? No, no, no. Okay. No. Not quite ready for that one. Are you in a relationship now? No, no, no. Okay. But uh, that's about it. Uh, my name is Craig Williams. Uh, married 14 years, have four daughters. I am, uh, well, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur and a business owner. And uh, do I talk? I talk too much. And uh, I listen, don't always hear. Well, let me back up. I hear all the time. <laughs> but I don't always listen as much as I talk. So I need to balance that out. Uh, what do I want? Uh, I want four, 14 more years in my marriage, oh, see, uh, but I'd like to get uh, what I put out. Uh, a lot of the brothers have uh, pointed out a lot of good realities of the day we live in. It has a lot to do with uh, how our women are prepared, just how their men have been prepared for marriage you know it works both ways uh, but I could definitely uh, agree with what has been said mostly here today uh, concerning women uh, them not having all the examples or have forgotten the, the examples you know uh, of what uh, we all want so uh, what was the other questions you've answered them actually okay. but you know one thing that you have uh, you're in a great position because the next generation of women, you have four daughters. Yes. So you are showing your daughters what a real man is supposed to do and how a real man is supposed to take care of his family. You're preparing your daughters to not have to be exactly. women like me. You know, because if we don't know, we can't do. Yeah. And you're, you're showing us, you're showing, hopefully you're showing your daughters what not to accept. Exactly. And what to expect. Exactly. Because children learn by what they see. This and is true. All the, for the women that are maybe too strong, that may be in a competition, that may feel like you're taking their shine, um, it's only because some of us, we are products of our environments. And yeah. no matter what we say we want, because we want the kind of man that will slay dragons for us. We want to be home having your dinner ready for you. You know, in reality, we, we really do. But the ways of the world sometimes doesn't allow that. Yeah. All of us ain't married to corporate attorneys. Yeah. You know, all of us ain't, can't just be the homemaker. You know, so sometimes we need to be able to talk about our days too. Yeah. You know. I, I would like to say this. I, I come from the opposite of what my wife comes from. She's an only child, had both of her parents, has a history in her bloodline on both sides of her, her parents of being married for 20, 30, 50 years. Uh, I don't have any of that. And I'm living something that I did not even have growing up myself. And I think she is, or we tend to take for granted what we're familiar with all the time. So she has lived uh, more of, uh, a sheltered life in her mind to think that she took it she takes that for granted whereas I don't and I'm driven to make something happen that I never saw happen so I, I would like to uh, kind of reach out to all of us to um, not take those things for granted you know that we are familiar with and kind of uh, you know consider the others more than ourselves I mean that's what marriage is about anyways you can't I mean you have to try to outdo the other person to for them not for yourself that's how it works, I believe. Craig was also on The Apprentice, y'all. I believe he was in the final four, you know. 
So, fi excuse me, final three. So, last, last one standing, uh, last man standing. You know, and it's ironic, um, the, the others were women. So, yeah, but it, we ain't competing. Uh, my name is Marcus Benjamin. I'm an electrical engineer for a computer company in Alpharetta. Um, what I want is, I just want to be happy, I guess. I mean, what would make you happy? Um, Short of a woman being built like Beyonce and banked like Oprah. Um, well, you know what? I, I think I want a woman that listens to me too. You know, that hears me out whenever I have you know stuff to talk about. Um, you know, provides me with you know the same thing she wants from me. I mean, I, you know, I think we both want that in a relationship, and I, that's what I want in a woman. Are you married? No, I'm not married. No, I'm Are single. You, uh, so you're not in a relationship right I'm not now. in a relationship, no, not currently. Okay. What was the problems in the last relationship? Why didn't it work out? Um, honestly, yeah, you know, not to toot my own horn or anything, but I think I was too perfect for the woman I was with. Just you got to have a little bit of swagger, you know. <laughs> just, 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 well, just, the only know. reason I say that is I think a lot of times women want something... They, they want a man to treat them a certain kind of way, sometimes. Uh, not worthy, I guess, if you will. Um, the reason I say that is because, like, you know, I've, I've been with several girls who've told me that, you know, you're, you're just too, you're too nice too of a nice. guy. You know, you listen too much. You no, know, let me give you some advice. Just don't call her for a couple of days and see how she feel, okay? <laughs> see, that's, that's the problem. Sometimes we think, you know, well, he's just so nice. But when that nice guy leaves us and we get somebody that's truly a dog, we appreciate the nice guys. You know, sometimes, you know, you, nice guys do get a, a little bad rap sometimes. I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of that, but I've had enough, enough of the bad boys. I could take a nice guy too. But nice guys, you know, true, truly nice guys sometimes get a bad rap. But why, why is that? I mean, why, why do we get bad raps? Because sometimes um, we want somebody to just say, look, just shut up. Just sit down, shut up, go cook.